Now, all right. Thank you all for being here. My name is Jay Franklin. My pronouns are he, him, is. Um, I'm the Associate Director of New Student Family Programs. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a product of Cal State San Marcos. I was a non-traditional student. Didn't go back to school until I saw nearly 30 years old and was freaking out, wanted to complete my bachelor's degree and have a career that had a retirement. I guess that's my story. Um, but I've been on campus. I got my undergrad in human development and my master's of education. I've been on campus since 2005. So I've literally watched this campus grow. Um, I worked for at Cal State San Marcos for about a decade in self-support in our extended learning unit. Um, and then a pandemic hit and now here I am in student affairs and get this wonderful opportunity to do family webinars. So this evening is a special family webinar uh, with uh, Travis from Housing. And given that I'm not a subject matter expert on this, I'm gonna turn this over to you, Travis. Take it away. Sounds good. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. I'm really glad to have a chance to talk with you uh, tonight about the new project at the campus and um, try to address any questions that you may have about how it will um, reshape our campus and also um, some of the impacts that it will um, have um, uh, for those of you living on our campus. Um, so my name is Travis Douglas. I'm the Executive Director of Housing and Residential Education. Um, I, my office is located actually in the UVA. Um, so that Building A is where I I'm located day to day when I'm um, on campus doing work. Um, what I want to do today is actually pull up a, a, a slideshow. So I'll show you some information about, about the project and what we're going to be building, um, and then also share some information about what to expect um, and how the physical site here at the UVA will change um, as we commence with the construction. Um, uh, throughout the presentation, if you have any questions, um, just drop your questions in the chat. Um, if I don't see them while I'm talking, uh, we'll make sure to hold time at the end of the conversation um, to come back to any questions that you place in the chat um, and, and work through your, your questions. Um, if I'm able to answer them, I'll try to do that here on the, on the presentation tonight. Um, or if not, then I may message you and we can follow up. Um, if I need to look up some additional information for you, um, we can get back with you um, as a follow-up. Um, so I'm going to um, share screen and pull up presentation. Hopefully that came through okay. Cool. Um, so the, the building, we've often referred to it as the University Village Housing and Dining Project. This is one of the early renderings, and this would be the view that you would actually find if you were walking across the street from the Union. Um, right now, when you arrive at the kind of crosswalk, you, you go through the, the little traffic signals and um, you cross the street and there's a staircase there, right? We're all used to walking down those stairs into uh, what was previously lot O, the parking lot. Um, instead, they will be filling that area in with quite a lot of, of dirt, and this would end up being the entry plaza. So instead of those stairs, you would arrive at this entry plaza um, to the building. The building is uh, um, going to be built with a, a, a state grant, so it's a total project budget of about $120 million, and $91 million of that came from funds through the state affordable housing grant. Uh, we'll be constructing a, a building with a 555 total beds, uh, really designed to serve first-year students. And it will also add a 10,000 square foot dining hall. And construction is planned to take place so that the building will open and be ready for students in the fall semester of 2026. Uh, this gives an overview of how the site um, will change. So where the building sits there, that, that kind of teal and yellow colored building, that's what's historically been lot O. The green areas that you see kind of off to the right of the building are where they're going to be adding infill dirt to really make that what is currently a really steep hillside into a really gentle inclining slope so that it'll be easy um, to walk through the site. Um, you'll see that there's some breezeway areas as those kind of little dotted line pathways go underneath the building. The teal colored area is the housing. And then the yellow area down at the bottom is the new dining hall facility. And this is a rendering of what the site will look like once the building is actually constructed and how it would look to see the building sitting um, on the hillside next to the um, campus way. Um, and right behind the building is where um, uh, PS1 or parking structure one is currently located. Uh, this is another um, kind of way of viewing how the ground floor would be shaped. So as you enter that entry plaza that I showed on the first image, um, you'd arrive kind of down here into this lower area. And you could enter into the dining hall 
where you could kind of carry on and walk through and enter the residential area or you know walk down a gentle sloping kind of sidewalk through this area and arrive at the UVA in that direction. Uh, if you go under the building through the breezeway, you'll you'll enter a sort of a plaza or courtyard area on the other side with some steps there. Um, so really great landscaping. Um, this should be a really interesting gathering area and um, outdoor amenity space for students to use. Up inside the residential areas, the building is organized into three wings. And uh, off to the right, you see here where it shows an example that's sort of blown up of one. The, the pink spaces that are up here, these are all located near the elevator lobby. So these are social spaces, areas where students can gather, uh, watch television, play games, those kinds of activities. And then down in the middle of the building, kind of on the knuckle of these wings, there is a dedicated study space for every floor. So there's an area outside of students' rooms where they could go um, to meet other students to study or just to have a quiet place to sit and work on, on academic work. And then uh, along the hallway, there's a, a bumped out area where several small restrooms are located. Uh, the building does have them organized in one location, so they're not en suite restrooms, but these are all individual restrooms that each has its own shower, its own toilet, its own sink. Um, so a private single user restroom. And the building is designed that way so that it can really serve um, individuals of any gender um, and gender isn't necessarily a constraint on the use of any of the restroom facilities in the building or how any of the bedroom spaces are assigned uh, for our students. Uh, as you move through the building, each floor will have a color theme um, that helps with wayfinding. So if you're on a floor and you know you live on the floor that sort of has a, a reddish tint, um, you'll be able to quickly pick that up as you exit the elevator and see some of the colors and the accents around you. And, and that's a wayfinding feature of the building. And one of the things that the architects have done uh, kind of creatively is that from the outdoors in that courtyard that I showed an image of um, a little bit ago, you would also be able to see through the windows um, kind of this dynamic fingerprint. So it's has kind of a building identity. And as you progress from one floor to the next, the colors shift um, through the colors that you see in the fingerprint here. Um, sort of just a, an interesting way to bring some art um, and some interest to the overall um, design uh, in the building. Um, on a given floor, as I mentioned, the, the colors um, serve as an accent that help you to know that you're on your particular floor or which floor you're on. Um, the accent color is picked up in the door frames, the carpet colors, um, the accent color on the wall here indicates that this is where you've arrived at that bathroom area. So you can turn to the right into this hallway and you would be in the bathroom space located off, off to the side of the hallway. At the very lowest level of the building, there is a lounge area uh, where students can gather and uh, watch television or maybe uh, plug in a video game equipment and, and use the, the televisions for gaming equipment. And they've separated the laundry off from that space um, so the students can see back and forth between these two spaces, but it's separated for noise and um, for climate control, um, but they can see into or out of the laundry room space down there as well. Uh, there will also be a couple of flexible spaces for uh, programs or events that would happen in the building. Um, one of them is more oriented towards um, activities that might revolve around food or like cultural events or those types of programs. And there is another one that is more oriented towards uh, workshops or possibly even academic classes um, that might be scheduled and hosted in the building. Uh, the building could possibly host some of our living learning communities like the San Marcos experience um, or similar programs that might be developed in the building in the future. Uh, so it has dedicated living learning space as well. And then the other major feature of the building, of course, is the dining hall, uh, which will add a lot of additional capacity for our dining program. Um, so here's a rendering of what that might look like if you're approaching one of the, the food service areas and a really interesting view that would see kind of what the overall um, view into the dining space would look like. Uh, I wanna talk a little bit about site access, especially for any students that might be living at the UVA. Uh, so they understand how the site's gonna physically change during the construction process. Uh, for the time being right now, access is continuing um, up the stairs that we've been used to using, which are kind of over in this corner. 
Um, and then this purple highlighted line here is where we have accessible path uh, that's you know for ADA or wheelchair access. Um, so that switchback is still there. These stairs are still accessible, and that'll remain the the primary way in and out of the site uh, for the first phase of construction. While they're really doing work over here, um, uh, right up against the building, the, the current UVA apartment buildings, uh, to add a new access out onto Campus Way. Um, so this isn't going to change for a little while, but right about March, we think they'll be finished with the work over here. And as of March, then that means um, the site will change. So once that's done, there will actually be a new street entry onto Campus Way along this hillside here. Um, and pedestrian access will be restored over through there. And students will be able to walk in and out of the site over here or walk in and out of the site up here by where the pool is. Uh, but at that point, the stairs and the, the original switchback um, kind of path will go away so that they can begin to do construction work that's up against the hillside. Um, and that, that change will happen in about March. Uh, during construction, there are some impacts or effects that we want to make sure that students um, are aware of. We, we do think that construction activity will be contained pretty much to the regular business day. So between about 7 a.m. and 5 p.m., uh, we should expect that that means there will be construction equipment moving in the site. That's going to create, um, you know, from time to time, different noises, maybe a little bit of vibration, some dust that comes from the construction activity. Um, there'll also be additional traffic um, entering and exiting the campus on Campus Way and Campus View Drive um, in order to bring materials into the campus. Um, so we'll have to be on the lookout for some of those effects. Um, and we know that that might have a bit of an effect on students. And um, in particular, we want to make sure that students are aware of alternative study spaces uh, so that they, if, if there's noisy activity during the daytime here at the site, um, that they're aware that there are other places on campus that they can find um, quiet places to go. Um, one really great option is up at the Kellogg Library. So if students are up uh, you know, in between classes and want to find a quiet place to go, rather than returning to the UVA, um, they might find a quiet area somewhere in the library. Um, or down in the, the neighborhood where housing is, um, there's also the extended learning building. And there are some dedicated quiet study lounges on the third and fourth floors. Um, and that's a really short walk, just right across Barham and, and right across the corner from uh, the uh, Campus Way Cafe where um, most of our students uh, take meals uh, on the dining plan. So that is the general information that I have about the site. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause here and we'll check the chat and see if folks have uh, any questions. And I'm gonna stop the recording now um, and stop.